all remember our favorite performers from way back. Do you ever wonder what happened to them? Well, let's find out. With an incredible range of five octaves, Ima Sumac was a sensation just after World War II. Known as the Nightingale of the Andes, her songs were drawn from the rich musical heritage of her native Peru. Even today, you still shouldn't have a wine glass in your hand when she hits a high note. Try to remember the kind of September when life was slow and oh so mellow. Try to remember the kind of September when grass was Good times and nostalgia also hit a high note when the crowds came out to honor the publication of the latest edition, the 10th volume of the best-selling series, Whatever Became Of. At the party in Hollywood, author Richard Lamparski was typically candid as he explained how he got the idea for his popular books. By living in Hollywood, seeing the way these people are treated ordinarily, which is the way lepers are treated in Calcutta, I thought there must be another way to give tribute to creative people simply because they're no longer of commercial value. And that's how it all began. And who was his toughest assignment for this edition? Uh, little Maria from Frankenstein. No one knew where she was. And the only reason I found her, Little Maria is the Frankenstein monster's victim who throws daisies into the river with her and ends up being killed because of it. Uh, I found out because May Clark was on a television show and she asked on camera if anyone knew where Marilyn, Marilyn Harris, who played Little Maria, was, she, would she please get in touch? And Little Maria got in touch with her and someone called me in London and said we found Little Maria and she gave me the first and only interview ever in her career. During the years when television graduated from the idiot box into a potent news and entertainment medium, Situation comedies became an important part of American life. Many familiar names from the golden age of television were at the party. Among them, Dennis the Menace, Jay North. Uh, it was wonderful for me to do that series, and, and the tough part was, I guess, when it was over and I had to, uh, to accept reality and go on and, and grow as an adult and uh, try to make it as an adult actor. Uh, I haven't had that much success as an adult actor like I had when I was a kid. From 1960 until 1972, parents empathized with the family problems of Fred McMurray and my three sons. Chip was played by Stanley Livingston. Later in the series, orphan Ernie Douglas was played by Stan's brother, Barry Livingston. I'm uh, still acting. I just finished a film for Canon Films called The Masters of the Universe. It should be out next year in the summer. I've been doing a lot of writing. Uh, I had a musical that I wrote that was playing in L.A. this summer, and it's called Dorian. In fact, Barry was the star of it. I started. Dobie Gillis. His many loves made Dwayne Hickman a TV star. The sitcom was represented at the party by Bobby Diamond, who played Dobie's cousin, Duncan Gillis, and also starred in Fury. As much exposure as I can get. I like, ex I like entertaining. Even what I do now. I'm an attorney now. I do nothing but entertain. Talking in front of a jury is the next best thing to a camera. Not quite as good, but almost. In the popular adventure series, Superman was played by the late George Reeves. His co-worker and number one admirer, Noel Neal as Lois Lane. Jack Larson was featured as cub reporter Jimmy Olsen. I had a bad year on the show when I was a very serious actor, which I was before, but suddenly I thought, what am I doing on this show? And I got very serious. That year, I don't like to say, I was better just playing Jimmy uh, 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 happily. I did a lot of college shows for a few years, which were a wonderful ego trip. And then lately, I've been doing quite a bit of promotion for the uh, Superman's birthday coming up next year. And uh, it's been really fun traveling around. Yeah, it's going to be 50th. If you've spotted some celebrities and are racking your brain to identify them, Andy Hardy's older sister was the gracious Cecilia Parker. Billed as the Prince of the Wurlitzer, organist Corla Pandit. Irene Manning began her career in the first Gene Autry films. That was very early, and you want to know something? Nobody else ever in all the things that Gene Autry did 
nobody kissed him, or he kissed no leading lady, only his horse. <laughs> And I'm the one exception to that rule. From radio's Dr. Christian with Gene Herschel to TV's first Life of Riley with Jackie Gleason, the charming Rosemary DeCamp. <laughs> An alumna of the great MGM musicals. Virginia O'Brien, Gene Christian. <laughs> Once notorious for her connections with the underworld, but now a delightful entertainer, Liz Renee. Well, today I'm rehearsing the most risque thing I've ever done in my life. It's a risque comedy act, and I think it's about the sexiest, wildest act that's ever been. I even invite the whole audience to my house after the show for an orgy. <laughs> the continental touch is still suavely displayed by Alex Darcy. Another screen personality who illuminated the Hollywood gossip columns. Lila Lee, in person. Lassie's first television pal, Tommy Reddick, is well acquainted with the danger of being typecast. What I really wanted to lose was the goody-goody Lassie image that to me was not a real American 11-year-old boy. It was rather a, a very conservative adult's image of what an 11-year-old boy should be. Um, it, getting busted for marijuana was what I did to overcome that image. And what is Richard Lamparsky to say about future books in his series? The media has made it a throwaway society. People are, are cast aside so quickly. I have enough material and people for four or five more books. More photo play coming up.